Hello, everyone. I don't know how I was going to handle this video because we have basically the same exact shocks that I put on my 2017 GS Adventure. We're doing it again six months later because it's a brand new bike. Um, in the last video I made, it was my first time ever changing the shocks on a GS. I edited it down from like five, six hours of work into half an hour per video. Um, now I have a different bike, 2018. Uh, I have different tools, the Weira tools, um, <clears throat> and I've done it before, and also we have better lighting now. So, you know, I thought about doing this again. Maybe, maybe I'll edit it differently where someone could watch both videos and kind of get the whole picture. Uh, as you guys know, the GS is telelever, so you've got your uh, suspension in the front right there, your fork, and then you've got your suspension in the back. Um, so we're replacing it with the uh, tractive suspension with ESA. Um, longer spring rate or higher spring rate, um, better cooling, uh, larger reservoir, high low compression, all kinds of cool little features. It's branded Tour Attack, but it's still a attractive product. They had the exclusivity on that. So I'm going to do, uh, make this into a video. Let's start off with the front one. The front one is actually the most work. Well, no, the front one is the most work as far as the amount of bolts you have to keep tra track of because you're removing all of the top of this bike, including the fuel tank. Um, the rear was the most work for me because I um, could not get the, 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 the shock loose of that rear swing arm. So, um, but once I figured out how to do it, it would have been like, you know, half the time as the, as the front just because you're managing less screws. So let's, um, let's get started. We'll do the front. So i uh, give you guys an overview. I'm not using the gimbal yet, but I will soon. Um, you've got to remove your winglets on both sides. You're going to remove the seat. There's two screws here. Uh, then you're going to be removing the screws right here. You're basically taking all the body work off. Uh, after that, you're going to be removing these side flares right here. You got the screws right there. Take those side work off. And then after that, um, you're going to go ahead and remove the fuel tank because you're going to need to get in the fuel tank to get to the bolt, which is hidden. It's back there. Um, once the fuel tank is off, uh, you'll then need to remove the air box, air intake box. Then you'll need to remove uh, these little clips that are here to remove the intake manifold, uh, pipes, hoses, whatever. <sighs> and then, um, I think, I also remember if I had, I had actually to jack up the front of the bike in order to get the uh, rear, the front wheel off the ground so that I can get the spring completely expanded so that I could remove it from the frame. It's a lot of work. This is a lot and lot of work. So, um, well, let, let's let's do it together. So this has been kind of the intro, I guess. But it's a lot of work. So let's get this thing on a uh, this camera on a tripod, and we're going to uh, get started. So for starters, we have our uh, these are all T25s. We've got two T25s right here. You can go ahead and yank out this guy as well. This is going to come out for the uh, for the fuel tape to come off. You'll notice here you've got four bolts: one, two, three, and four. Those all seem to come out. Then we've got two up here, one, two. Those come out, and then we're also going to be removing these five. All right, so now we have these two loose, these two loose, these two, and then that one down there as well. So from here, you can close this back up, if you can. And then uh, this just comes right out. This pops right out. It's going to be held a little bit by some pins here around the fuel tank. But uh, we can pop that right out. And then um, I can't do this with one hand because you are going to have some um, some clips that are holding in here. So you kind of need to finagle it out. So let's get this set up and I can show you how this comes out. Now you've got this being held on here on both sides. So you kind of just slide this off. See how this clip is right there? Slide this off and you can pull this off to this side and then you're off. So now you've got the exposed fuel tank. This sticker's always off. And then you've got the exposed air box back here. Uh, so we're going to keep taking the trim off of the front here just to get that out of the way. And then we'll keep going uh, on the rest of this then primer there. Pretty neat, though. Pretty awesome piece. All right. So all we have now is just the top part here, which is really all you have to do if you're going to be changing your air filter. It's right there. You've got your uh, couple of bolts. There's four of them. Four bolts, and you're off the races, basically. But since we're removing uh, the whole fuel tank, we got a little bit more work to do. 
So uh, one thing, a tip that I've been using for a while now on my bikes and car is when I remove a bolt, I put it right back where it came from. So you see here, we've got these bolts, just a little bit threaded in there, not too crazy, but I put all the bolts right back where I got them. Uh, that's my, my tip to keeping all of these, you know, I took this out and I basically put the bolt right back in there. So, it, you know, if I can, if I can afford to do that, um, it works great for not losing track of where things go. So uh, next up, we go to the side here of the bike. We've got, uh, these are all T25s. One, this is a T40 holding the uh, upper crash bar in right there. I've already loosened it up. Uh, then we've got another T25 right here. And that's it for this side. Uh, and then on the front, and of course, this is all one piece, right? This wing is all the way down. So you're going to be coming all the way down here. Let's go underneath. You can see we got a few more in here. We'll get to those in a second. We'll go ahead and get the uh, the side panels off first. Then we'll uh, proceed with the rest of this. But making some good progress. Um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically get everything off of the fuel tank so you can get the fuel tank off in one piece. I totally forgot that there are two more bolts right there and right there. Those need to come out for this piece here to move. Also, uh, when you're taking the uh, top piece off, you'll need to get this uh, upper crash bar off to get to this bolt. So once again, rethread it back in here. It's a T40 here and then another T40 right there, just on the bottom one, and it'll fly right down like that and get out of your way. You'll need it out of the way anyway, the rest of this work. So it's just good to have that fall right over for you. All right, so now, got some clips on the bottom here. Now you've got your uh, your left trim piece and your roundel. And of course, the name of the game is to uh, screw back in, right back into their respective pieces. A lot of people say, oh man, how did you, uh, how did you not lose track of all these bolts? Well, you got two right here as well. Because uh, put them back where they go before I put the part to the side. All right, so while I have you guys, without having to pause my music again, uh, next step is gonna be removing this trim piece right here, which is easily just one, two bolts. And then finally, we're gonna be removing um, this upper front piece here. I can't remember if this is necessary or not, but it may be actually to remove the air box. We're removing the whole air box. So let's go ahead and get the front part side done, side part, and then we'll be able to remove this tank after a couple more bolts that come out. Last thing you're gonna do is there's a, there's a T25 that's right under here, just one side. Uh, and then you have the two air intakes. There's also T25s there that are holding this red piece on. And then from there, you can pull this right off. Obviously, you don't wanna bend this plastic, so just take your time. It's not a, it's not a race. Just like that. So in my last video, I actually removed the front beak first. No need, just remove this guy like that. And now we have, uh, well, other than the fuel tank, we have DGSA'd our GS, GSA. <laughs> so once the fuel tank comes off, you're uh, you're pretty much back to a GS. I guess other than the front suspension, that's a little bit taller. But um, let's make sure we keep track of both of these little sticky pieces. One of those went with it. And then of course, as usual, stick your uh, your T25s back in their respective holes. So now we're finally able to see, well, no, actually we're not. <laughs> we're not there yet. Uh, down here at the very end of this is where the uh, towel lever will uh, connect up, but air box is still in the way. So more work to do. So uh, T25 and T40, you've got to make sure you get these tubes out as well to, um, well, this piece right here. This was in place. You've got these little tubes that go into the um, the holes like that. And then you've got these big, massive T40 bolts that uh, hold them in. This is for the fuel tank. And then if you give this a really good tug, it'll slide right out. Um, it, it helps to use a tool, but I just forced it out. All right, so now the fuel tank is loose from the rear. Um, what you got to do now is you're going to have to actually remove the fuel cap so we're gonna take all these off, yank this guy off, and then uh, set it to the side somewhere on top of one of these because you don't wanna get fuel everywhere. T30, I was, I was wrong. That base is actually a T30, not a T25 for the fuel tank. T20, T30 and T40. There it 
There may be an order to these, but. Also, if you guys don't already own one, make sure you get one of these magnetic bolt holders because they are wicked awesome. And uh, that obviously will piss off the girlfriend because the house smells like gasoline. You've been warned. Also, Heather, you've been warned as well. Okay. The fuel tank is loose now. I'm mostly recording this because uh, if I drop it, at least I'll have a funny YouTube fail for a $1,600 part. Um, ideally, you don't want to drop this if you can help it. Uh, it is steel, but um, it's heavy. It's full of gasoline. So you know, I, I guess I could have done this before I put a bunch of fuel in there for the winter. I should have done that this first, then stored it. But Oh, that's right. I forgot. You're going to slide this back onto a towel. And there's actually a fuel, a few fuel disconnects on the rear of this tank, right underneath on the bottom side. So we're gonna put a towel back here. We're gonna slide it back and then we'll do the disconnects. I don't know how much I'll be able to videotape it, but I'll try my best. You can see them right back there. So the disconnects, you've got three of them. They're really easy, they pop right out. They're little quick release tabs, but get those out of there and get a towel ready in case you need fuel leaking. Whew, didn't drop it. <laughs> Woohoo. Oh man, we've got our blanket here. I can go to the side for now. Now we've got the uh, air box exposed. Let's make sure this is all in frame. There we go. So the air box is fully exposed. We've got our fuel line disconnects here. Clean those up a little bit. Um, to get this fuel box off, it's actually not that many bolts. You've got one here, one here. You got a couple more on the rear side, I think. The hard part is going to be these little uh, uh, clips down here, and you're going to remove the clips at the top side uh, with a little pair of pliers, and then yank it right off. These are rubber, so they're a bit tight, especially for a new bike. Uh, once you do that, then you're going to have this, the fuel, um, uh, damn it, why am I drawing a plank? Uh, you'll have the, um, the fuel lid, tank lid, whatever, set that kind of down here, and then you have everything pretty much exposed to you in order to get to the... Uh, this one bolt that's right freaking back here. So, um, but the good news is, the reason why I'm excited about this, if you're gonna be wiring up LEDs and a bunch of power modules to your bike, this is an excellent way to get everything fully exposed so you have the whole bike uh, ready to be running wires and stuff. So it's actually, if you're gonna be doing a lot of stuff at once, this is actually a really thing, good thing to do. And also it allows you to clean up the bike and uh, you know really get it in tip top shape. All right. Let's, uh, re Let's get our breath for a second. It's actually nice that I've done this before because now I have an idea of where things actually need to, uh, what needs to happen next. So I remember actually these snorkels were hard to get past these mounting brackets. So if you look down here, you can see a couple of T30s right there and right there. So you loosen those up. Don't remove it completely, just loosen them up enough where you can get the snorkel around it if you need to. And then the next step is going to be loosening up, uh, well, removing these bolts on both sides of the airbox here, which I've already done. They are uh, right here. So that was right in there. And then finally, uh, we are going to be removing the uh, the clip holding this lower part of the airbox in. I did the top one last time, it didn't work very well. So what you're using is you're using these pliers. I'll link to them below. Uh, you've got these nice little pointers here. You're gonna come in, well, I'll show you the other side how it looks actually. I've already done this one. So what you're doing is you're clipping into the far one on the left and the one on the far right. And then when you squeeze both of those in, it'll just basically pop right open. You may need to put your finger on this piece here to kind of help it out. Once that's done, you can just yank this right off with the air box. So uh, I'll do that for you now. So you can see here how this comes up over there. Um, obviously you don't use any tools here. You don't want to scratch this up. You want to have a good seal between uh, the intake and the cylinder head. But yeah, I'll do the other side and then I'll uh, get back to you guys. We'll pull this thing off. Far corner, weren't they? So I can even see, show you guys what's happening here. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unrelated to you, Siri. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. Put there. That's off. Other side. Also off. Now can we get this off?
have to get these clips moved so they don't scratch up the throttle bodies. Oh, we have some uh, quick releases here. Push in. Just on one side, it seems. Aha! I forgot. The coolant needs to be undone. So, if you look over here, I don't even BMW text for cringing watching this. You look over here, you've got the coolant reservoir. You can pop it off pretty easily. It will leak if you don't have it upright. So, you get the zip tie and you just need to zip tie it up to whatever. Probably this bracket. Oops. You can probably zip it up to this bracket right here. But yeah, the coolant box has to come off because it is affixed to the air box. So, but it is really easy to do. Just have your zip tie ready because it will leak if it's sideways. Okay, so it was a uh, little T30 bit right here that goes out of the uh, coolant reservoir. And you can see here, we've hooked it up to, uh, to this bracket here. Also, uh, use your clip thing again to remove this guy here because this needs to come loose from this little piece right there. So you've got one more uh, hose right there. Maybe it's an air intake thing, I don't know. A uh, breather of some sort. So I think we're ready to uh, make this official. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and stuff some towels inside these throttle bodies. I don't want any dust getting in there. It's just, you know, I'm sure the system would kind of self clean that, but we're about to pull a lot of plastic around, so. All right. Looks like we also have a small zip tie up here on the left-hand side. So we're gonna have to redo that. Oh, we have a little, another little hose right here on the bottom side. of the air box right here. And I bet, it's just a pull thing. I bet we have the exact same thing on the other side. Yeah, I remember this little MFR. It's just a little, probably an air intake sensor for the uh, temperature is on both sides. It is. And the left. Ah, what a pain in the ass this front one is. <laughs> As I said last time too, while you're doing this, feel free to um, go ahead and change your air filter as well. Cause you, <laughs> you know, so everything's pretty much out of the way now. This is the only bolt we care about. Let's zoom in here. So all of this work, if you're just doing your front shock, just to get to this bolt. Um, <laughs> let's just take a second to appreciate <laughs> telelever suspension. If you run a KTM and you haven't been watching this video, uh, be thankful you have conventional forks. Um, but I personally love telelever. It, is, it, it just, it feels so stable at speed and it doesn't dive and it just, really really is a nice suspension system once you get to it all right i'm gonna stop the video for here i'm gonna take a quick breather get some lunch and then we'll get back to you guys in a few minutes i highly recommend a heat gun for this um, and the use of a t50 torx i already got it out but basically uh before you hit this the t50 on the top um Hit it with the heat gun for about two minutes. Be careful not to you know, hit any plastic, but just basically hit it right on here and it will help you significantly. And then on the rear, oh, sorry, on the bottom, same thing applies. Uh, there's the bottom bolt, it's already out now. Uh, same thing, T50, uh, hit it with the heat gun probably for two minutes, I did three. Um, so here's our bottom bolt. You see how it's thread locker applied to it. This reminds me though, you guys, so I spoke to two tech, uh, BMW techs about this. Both of them said, don't bother. But um, what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and bought the replacement bolts. So. This one. Nope. This 
this one. So I went in and bought the replacement bolts from BMW. You can see them here. They were special order. They don't keep them in stock. Um, I was told by two techs, don't bother. Don't replace the bolts. Just re-thread lock them. But I kind of like these come with the OEM uh, BMW thread locker from the factory. So I spent 50 bucks and I rebought all the suspension bolts. You don't have to do this, especially if it's a brand new bike. But uh, I aim to have the suspension on the bike for many, many years to come. So I wanted to use... Um, the, the brand new bolts from the factory. Again, uh, you know, you don't have to do it, but that's what I did. All right, so uh, next steps. Um, you'll see here, you've got your ESA connection that comes out of the shock, it's right there. This is, this is completely loose now. Uh, and this cable will fall, follow back here. And where does it go? Well, it comes through and it's hooking up behind here. Um, I'll find out the termination point and get back to you guys. I've done this before. This was actually a big problem last time of trying to get this cable um, removed. Uh, do this before you remove the shock, obviously, but follow that cable that's basically affixed. And uh, you'll see it goes... Where are you? There's a little hook right under there. I'll get it and come back to you guys. I kind of cheated and I took our shock out already. <laughs> but you can see here how this uh, how this is uh, bolted into that. So basically what you're doing is you've got a little railing right underneath this uh, wiring harness. And then you just slide it right out through there. And you'll look on our new Touratech shock. You've got this uh, slide bit here. So you're sliding this in this direction. Then you're hooking up this cable right here, which is the ESA uh, receiver goes right into there. So both of those are going to get married up. So let's go ahead and get the new shock in there and we will uh, wire it up. Now, one thing you'll notice is the uh, Touratech uh, ESA cable is thinner than the OEM one. So when it comes to... When it comes to fitting it in these little uh, carriers here, You'll, you'll, you'll have problems getting them in there. Um, you can always use a little tiny uh, zip ties to uh, keep them snug in there. We got our fuel pump right there. Is that our fuel pump? Oh, there's our coolant, uh, coolant uh, hoses and pump there. Pretty cool. I need view. You don't get to see very often. All right, so let's stick the uh, Touratech module in there, Tractive module, and get it hooked up. So we're pretty much at the end of our job, but you see how I put the little zip ties right here just to uh, hold that in a little bit better uh, in case it comes out. It's uh, it's in there, but it just gets a little bit extra extra hold there. So um, you know, the only tip I can really give you guys uh, to, for, for getting this shock in here would be to utilize the jack you have underneath the bike to um, lift up the, the bike to get sort of the holes aligned. I would say do the uh, top one first, the top bolt first. Just, just thread it a couple of times. And then for the bottom one, you're gonna utilize the jack stand up and down until you get that right where it's it's all aligned. And then you can, uh, you know, torque it right down. Um, I'm not gonna do more on this video because basically just work backwards, getting all your parts back on. And, and really I was kind of being selfish a little bit because um, I, I have to now do a ton of more work to this bike with all the fairings off of it. Uh, that'll be made easier by having it naked like this. So. Um, you know, if I remember to do a, 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 a kind of a time lapse or something of, of putting everything back on there, I'll definitely do that just so you can benefit from it. But for now, I think this is pretty much it. So you see the shock is in there and uh, just work backwards. And uh, if you're like me, make sure you stay really organized here so you get everything kind of laid out nicely and get all that back piece by piece uh, and you'll be good to go. All right, well, front shock is installed. Thanks for watching everyone and uh, ride safe.